Hey, my name is Chris. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm going to be talking about radiation and pregnancy. To start the video off, the main takeaways are that moms are allowed to get abdominal CTs, they're allowed to get x-rays, walking around in public, they're going to be exposing the baby to at least one milligray of radiation. And although there is no safe level of radiation during pregnancy, usually greater than 100 milligrays is when you're starting to notice defects. When moms are exposed to significant levels of radiation, there is an increased risk of leukemia in children. And lastly, if moms in the postpartum period are breastfeeding and they require imaging with contrast, then there should be no inability for them to breastfeed. Hi, my name is Chris, and today I'm going to be talking about radiation in pregnancy. So this is going to be a relatively short video. It's going to be focusing on the committee opinion number 723 off of ACOG. And the first figure that I want to show you is a table that compares the fetal dose radiation to the imaging modality. When looking at this image, it's important to keep in mind that the baseline risk that mom is going to experience during pregnancy is one milligram. So the abdominal x-ray is going to be one to three. So you have to imagine that that's pretty much the same as mom just walking around. The next thing that I want to talk about is that there are ways to reduce the amount that baby is going to be taken in for ionizing radiation, and those will be done from the radiologist's perspective. The main one is pretty much decreasing the length of the scan. The next portion of this video really is the amount of milligray and its effects on baby. And this I created a graph using one of the, the Croatia papers that I'm going to link at the bottom of the video. And this is referring to the weeks of gestation on the x-axis and the dose in milligray on the y-axis. And when looking at the chart, you can see that pretty much at 100 milligray, you start noticing defects, which can be small for head size, IQ, IQ reduction, as well as mental retardation. As you get to higher levels of milligray, you can notice that you can get more severe effects like organ malformation, as well as growth retardation. Now, taking a step forward and going beyond mom during the antepartum period, there are also postpartum effects potentially in children. The first one really that I wanna focus on is the risk of leukemia, a type of cancer that children can have. And there's an increased risk in this if mom is exposed to greater than 10 milligray. And keep in mind when you're looking at 10 milligray and go back to originally table one and see what imaging modalities would achieve 10 milligray. And really in the third trimester, there is a 40% increased risk that mom is gonna have a baby that has potential to have leukemia by age 19. The next chart I wanna focus on is the risk of fetal malformation. And in general, there is a 4% risk of fetal malformation in normal, healthy patients. But when you are combining that with fetal dose of radiation, you can see from this chart that there is a small increased risk really once you get above 100 milligray. The last thing I want to talk about was breastfeeding and radiation. So if you are getting any imaging studies that require contrast, i.e. gadolinium or ferroheme, then you have to know that breastfeeding can continue without interruption during those contrast studies. Now, if you're getting radio radionucleotides, that's a little different and that will require a radiologist and MFM to consult regarding that specific radionucleotide. Anyways, I hope this video helped shed a little light on radiation and pregnancy. I'll be going into a few more videos, kind of specifically talking about different topics, but this one was just a general video. Hope that helped. See you soon.